you do. Now you see how this works. It's not your balls to the wall. It's it's their balls. And you're telling them that they're going to get your balls to the wall. Them, the, those people that have been running your life your whole life. The global, they consider themselves elitists, and you're going to keep backing them up and backing them up until their back's against the wall. And then they're going to get their balls to the wall, man. <laughs> That's how that works. Anyway, welcome to the Balls to the Wall show here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Uh, every Friday night we do either Balls to the Wall or Freakers, and it's usually Freakers. But Moose Girl has a festival that she's off to for this week, so you got me instead of me and her. Anyway, welcome, like I said, to all of the freaks that are here, you Balls to the Wallers. You backer-uppers of the elitists. <laughs> oh, man, how you doing? It is Friday, August 17, 2018. Friday. Yep. Anyway, welcome to all the folks that are listening, wherever you may be. If uh, you're on the video stream, you're in the right spot, and I'm glad to have you here. Hopefully you're in the chat as well. But if you're on the audio stream, you could be at a number of spots uh, one of them being the all-new, re uh, well, let's, let's call it 2.0, World Truth 2.0, welcome to the World Truthers. That's right, Freedoms Network is going down. Um, next Thursday is the official final day. I put in a little notice there on the site that, that get your stuff done by Wednesday, get, get your data saved by next Wednesday if you have any up there that you want to keep. If you got blog posts or photos or whatever, I don't know, whatever you might have posted on the Freedoms Network. But if you got crap up there, then um, you hear you in flash. <laughs> I don't know how that would be happening. Vincent, Vincento. Let me see, is the uh, is the thing working here? Let me let me make sure the audio stream is working. Yeah, you're doing it wrong, man. No, I'm, I'm, um, yeah, no, I'm on. I don't know what you got going on there, buddy. Refresh your page or something. Oh, you can't hear me. Ha! <laughs> Somebody in the chat tell him to refresh his page. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, welcome to the World Truth People. Welcome back, after all these years, to the World Truth People. And like I said, if you're on Freedoms Network, get on over to worldtruth.org and make an account and and uh, move your information over there and uh, say hi and howdy and make friends of us all once again instead of being on Freedoms Network and now on WorldTruth.org. Like I said, it, it, we're, that is officially shutting down on August 23rd, which is next Thursday. But uh, get your stuff out by Wednesday. Thanks, Flash. Um, anyway, and if you're on Minds and you saw the link and you tuned in, wonderful to have you here with us. Wonderful. If you're on TuneIn or Internet Radio or just on the on the RLMRadio.xyz page or at wherever you may be, I don't know. Look at that. I'm kicking bots while I'm, while I'm talking here. I, I didn't even realize it. <laughs> Anyway, so welcome to everybody here in the chat uh, tonight, today. Thanks, Frump. Uh, we we got we we got we got we got a crowd. We got we got me and Barman, and the Moose Girl still checked in, although probably not around. We don't know. She may be sitting there in her in her living room listening. <laughs> we don't know what time she's leaving. Anyway, we got Miss Kate. We got the Phantom and Asmo and Beth and Chloe and Chelsea Donny Circle. Circle of Weekend, she's probably still sleeping. Um, another Chloe. Look at that. Chloe's not even sitting next to each other. We got Colfax 101, the Cyborg Noodle, the Dakota, the Dakota Echelon, uh, Flash Somebody, Frumpy, Graham Z, I B, Don C, times two, the Java Doctor, the JJs, the Wana Taco. Uh, Kuzu, Maester Brow, Moe, Pox, 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 Poxified, uh, Pone Sauce, and Rain in the Fluke Pot, and Mr. Rob Works, Sock Puppet, Skeetle <laughs> Bot, and uh, Rome's Trust No One, and uh, Vin E. 
and others that we may just not know about. That may let me see who's on on the audio stream. We got anybody on the audio stream? Could be somebody over there. I haven't even looked. And it looks like yeah, we got a few on the audio stream, and I know who a couple are. <laughs> So how do you see audio streamers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to relate to you a boring story. A boring story to you that was a, not a boring story to me. <laughs> and, and let me tell you, I've been with the uh, VOIP company I use for six years. And they're called Voipo. And they, they're um, operated underneath of HostGator. Voipo. And they've been a great company, terrific company. I pay uh, $150 every two years to for service. That's it. I don't I don't pay monthly. Every every two years I pay 150 bucks. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, when you when you sign up for Voipo or for a VOIP service, they send you a, a little adapter, a modem uh, that your phone operates through. And the one I'd had been working great all of this wonderful time all these six years and then uh, recently it started having like some static on it and it was very annoying very annoying so anyway I sent them a request send me a new modem and then they said okay well we can send you a brand new modem right now if you want to pay 50 bucks or you can start answering our questions and following our our, our little steps that we want you to go through <laughs> just to make sure you're not an idiot we're not sending you a modem for nothing so I worked with them for about two days of just going through everything imaginable and I was telling them it's a six year old modem it's been sitting where it's been sitting for the same amount of time it's been connected the same way it's been connected for all this time <laughs> I've done reboots and resets and all the other stuff you might want to do on it, but no, they had to go in all these various steps. And it was probably about a good dozen emails back and forth uh, between them and I on, on that. They finally said, okay, you've proven that you're you're getting tired of us and we're going to send you a new modem. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so anyway, I got I got my new modem yesterday last night and I hooked it up and everything seemed to be working fine and it's totally different than the other one that I had before no big deal whatever it's new it's six years newer technology but then when I got up this morning it was no longer it, was, it wasn't working it was making this kind of weird it would like vary between a dial tone and a, a, a null sound <laughs> And I went through it. I did some, and I and I looked up on the interwebs how to, how to get in there and and do a reset on the thing and everything. And I did all that, and then it wasn't working at all. <laughs> so I actually found their phone number and I called them up, and uh, uh, the guy that I talked to was was a sharp dude for a for an online tech, and uh, one one of these people you call customer support tech, and uh, he was able to. to get it to go and, and work again that's my boring story on my phone modem either way if you're if you, you like VOIP service or you have a phone service now that you're paying more for why not go ahead and sign up for VoIPO there's a link there on reallibertymedia.com <laughs> that was not the intention of that story but uh, that's that's where it wound up at look at that I got the duck all right um <laughs> That's just nice music. Uh, I've told you my boring story about my Voipo. <laughs> oh, boy, where's my camera? There it is. All right. And it is this one. All right. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, yeah, aren't they terrific? Cobra and the Lotus with Soldier. And uh, that's from uh, just like a couple weeks ago that came out. And uh, a brand new album they, they have out called High Priestess. Uh, so uh, check out Cobra and the Lotus when you can. Before that, also off of their brand new one, Judas Priest 
with No Surrender. And that album is going to be called uh, Firepower. Or is is already called Firepower, I guess. <laughs> anyway, Judas Priest still rocking it and still putting out them awesome anthems. And we kicked it off there with Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood, live from El Macambo. Yes, indeed. Good rock and roll there. All around, I would say. Well, of course, that's, you know. What else, what else am I going to say about stuff I play? <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, what y'all got going on for the weekend? Anything good? Anything fun? Anything cool? We got two, huh? What? Quite over there. <laughs> I hate when those videos do that, start playing a a little little bit of themselves before I before I tell them it's okay. <laughs> oh man, is that the same one? Is that the same one? Yeah, I think that's the same one. 1980, 19, yeah, that's the same one. Um, wait, wait, what, what, what? Don't mind me. I'm talking to myself. Um. <laughs> oh boy, it's difficult, you know, doing the uh doing everything when without without the moose girl here. But uh I manage. I get by. Kinda more or less. Sorta. Kinda sorta. What song sucked? Kick his ass. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. I can only see a little bit of the screen uh, below my other. Stop that. <laughs> right. Jesus. What songs? I don't know what he's talking about. Always, oh, always oh, talking the nonsense there, that Vinny man. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, we'll do. We'll, we'll we'll take care of that in a minute. I I want <laughs> I, I want to share this article, even though it's, it's an older article. Hey, Grammy! I, I want to share this article, even though it's an article from like almost two years ago now. Um, but it's still highly relevant. Yeah, damn, that'll start exactly. <laughs> It's posted over here on the free the free thought project dot com fifteen years later physic magazine concludes all three yes three world trade center towers collapsed due to controlled demolition controlled demolition yes that's right. September 11, 2001, the world witnessed the total collapse of three large steel-framed high-rises. Since then, the scientists and engineers have been working to understand why and how these unprecedented structural failures occurred. This tooth is giving me a problem here. I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's, it's like sticking up on me and causing me not to be able to talk clearly. <laughs> anyway... Over the past 15 years, many highly respected academics and experts have come forward to challenge the official narrative on the collapse of the World Trade Center Towers, forwarded by the U.S. government. The official government position holds that the collapse of all three towers was due to intense heat inside of the buildings. Yeah, well, thermite will cause that intense heat, won't it? Anyway, um, but the new forensic investigation into the collapse of the three World Trade Center towers on 9-11, published by Europhysics News, a highly respected European physics magazine, claims that the evidence points overwhelmingly to the conclusion that all three buildings were destroyed by controlled demolitions, which is obvious to anybody with a pair of eyes and even a little bit of brain matter. <laughs> While many in the mainstream have attempted to label anyone questioning the official narrative as tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist, 
<laughs> How did they know my name? Uh, man, many highly respected experts have come forward to lampoon the idea that the buildings collapsed due to the intense heat and fires following the two terrorist-directed plane crashes, as if they were even terrorist-directed. Unless, of course, you're including the real people behind it as the terrorists not the ones that they told you they were the terrorists. Given the far-reaching implications, it is morally imperative that the hypothesis be the subject of a truly scientific and impartial investigation by responsible authorities. I think they mean experts, because authorities has a bad connotation to it. The four physicists conclude in the damning report the new report is the work of Stephen Jones, former full professor of the physics at Brigham Young University, Robert Coral, a professor emeritus of civil engineering at McMaster University in Ontario, uh, Anthony Sazambadi, a mechanical design engineer with over 25 years of structural design experience in the aerospace and communications industries, and Ted Walter, the director of strategy and development for architects and engineers for 911 Truth, AE 911 Truth, a nonprofit organization that today represents more than 2,500 architects and engineers. The comprehensive report in the Europhysics magazine directly challenges the official narrative and lends to a growing body of evidence that seriously questioned the veracity of the government narrative. In 2002, the National Institute of Standard and Technology, or NIST, if you will, remarked that the case was exceptionally bizarre, that there were no other known cases of total structural collapses in high-rise buildings caused by fires, and it, so it's deeply unusual that it should have happened three times in the space of one day. Highly unusual. <laughs> yeah, about totally impossible, but whatever. Anyway, official investigations have never uh, been able to thoroughly and coherently explain how this might have happened, and various teams tasked with examining the collapse have raised difficult questions about the veracity of the government's lies. Uh, story. Perhaps the most damning of all, the experts claimed that after a thorough forensic analysis of the footage, the video footage of the building's collapse, it revealed signs of controlled implosion. Additionally, Jones has co-authored a number of papers documenting evidence of the un unreacted nanothermitic material at the w in the WTC dust. The authors of the report note that the buildings fell with such speed and symmetry that there was no other feasible explanation for the sudden collapse at free fall speeds, directly refuting studies that attempted to debunk the idea that the building fell without resistance. These respected experts uh, knew forensic analysis only adds to the growing movement of people calling for a new and impartial investigation into the collapse of the World Trade Center, which, of course, we will never get. Revealing the scope and breadth of public disbelief in the official government narrative surrounding the events of 9-11, even presidential candidate Jill Stein has recently called for a new investigation. Of course, she's also labeled as a tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theorist, as am I, and, well, probably more than a couple of y'all. <laughs> anyway, I, I thought it was um, a good time to bring that back up and share it all here again with you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a big button issue for me, too, uh, Grammy. Um it, it, it's always been a big button issue for me uh, because of everything that came from that, uh, not just the wars in Afghanistan and, and Iraq, but 
but of course the Patriot Act was a huge one, the NDAA, uh, all of all of the things they do now, the TSA, uh, all, all of the nasty things they're doing to you, because those people hate you for your freedom. So in order to stop them from hating you for your freedom, well, just get rid of that nasty freedom stuff. You don't need none of that freedom stuff. Just just get it out of the way. <laughs> Who are you to think you can have some freedom? That just, that just ain't right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Homeland Security. Oh, yeah, that's another huge one, Kate. Oh, God. All right. Well, I have two articles here on this next thing, and, 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 I, and, I, and I just want to share a little bit with you. I don't really have too much to say about her other than, well, she was she was an awesome woman. Did uh, She was iconic herself. And her music was as well, and uh, she will be missed. So, Rip, R.I.P. Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, has died at the age of 76. One of the most important voices in the music history has passed away. This posted on consequenceofsound.net. Um, Aretha, yeah. Franklin, uh, the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, died at 76. She died Thursday due to an advanced pancreatic cancer of the neuroendocrine type, according to the singer's family. She passed away in her Detroit home, surrounded by family and friends. It wasn't a surprise. We all knew it was happening or, or coming. Um, she'd been in, in the hospital there for a little while, and, and uh, she, she just wasn't doing well. Anyway, in the darkest moments of our lives, we're not able to find the appropriate words to express the pain in our heart, Franklin's family said in a statement. We have lost the matriarch and rock of our family. The love she had for her children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and cousins knew no bounds. We have deeply been touched by the incredible outpouring of love and support we have received from close friends, supporters, and fans all around the world. Thank you for your compassion and prayers. We have felt your love for Aretha, and it brings us comfort to know that her legacy will live on. As we grieve, we ask for your respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, for our privacy during this difficult time. One of the best-selling artists of all time, Aretha Louise Franklin, was born on March 25, 1942, in Memphis, Tennessee, to Barbara and Clarence LaVon Franklin. Her mother was an accomplished piano player and vocalist while her father was a preacher. Man, with that many, uh, claimed a million-dollar voice, all of which would heavily influence Franklin. At age of two, Franklin's family relocated to Buffalo, New York, a short stint that would last only three years before her father moved the family to Detroit, Michigan, where he became a pastor at the New Bethel Baptist Church. By 1948, her parents would separate, with Barbara moving back to Buffalo with her half-brother, Vaughn. Although she would see her mother over the years before her untimely death in 1952, Franklin was primarily raised by her grandmother, Rachel, and soul singer, Mahalia Jackson. Is that how you say that, Mahalia? I think, it's, I think so. Anyway, it was during this time that Franklin developed an ear for music, quite literally, as she learned to play piano by herself and watched her father's vivid sermons. Anyway, I'll, I'll give you this because there's a lot more uh, personal and information about their, her in uh, about from her in this article. She she was cool. She you know she was she was, she was pretty amazing and awesome. And and I have another article that I'm just gonna kind of give you a little tidbit from, but it's from the Rolling Stone magazine. Um, Aretha Franklin, Queen of Soul, dead at 76, Hall of Fame singer, cultural icon, and civil rights activist who influenced countless vocalists, succumbs to pancreatic cancer. So um, I'll, I'll just give you the, the link to this one because, well, you all got your own personal thoughts and feelings and uh, uh, about her. And, 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 and to that end, 
She knew Smokey as a kid, did she? Hmm, right on. See? Anyway, there, there's those uh, two Aretha Franklin articles. I'll, I'll put them links in the, the blog post tomorrow. And um, right now, right now, though, however, right now, uh, we are, are going to hear a bit from the lady, Miss Aretha Franklin. And this first one is a, a clip from the Blues Brothers movie. Out there and dressed like her seated diamond. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Aretha, rest in peace. Rock in peace. Rock in paradise. R.I.P., however you want to apply it. Uh, anyway, that was a, a triple play there uh, in uh, a memoriam for Aretha Franklin. Chain of Fools. Respect and think from the Blues Brothers movie. Uh, I, I don't know what movie that... Uh, it must have been some movie that John Travolta was dancing around there, but uh, it doesn't list what movie that might have been. Um, and I don't recognize it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, it was, it was good stuff, good stuff. Uh, if you like good music, it was good stuff. <laughs> For those of you that do, as I, as I say on here quite often, those of you that do like good music, uh, that that was that was one of them. Vinny was on the chain gang. Interesting. Oh, he wasn't on the chain. <laughs> okay. Alrighty then. Alrighty then. Okay. Official. How cool is that? Official. Alright. Just getting my stuff set up here for the next. I always do that first, you know. Do, 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 do. That all looks great. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Oops. Stop that. Michael. Oh, so he was like an angel in that movie? Thanks, Grammy. The movie was called Michael. All right. <laughs> he, he was doing some funky dancing there, boy. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. Round up, round up, round up. And... Roundup. In your cereal, so says a certain group of people. Yeah, Roundup. In your cereal. Stop that. All right. Um, so according here to the Fortune.com website, Roundup weed killer chemical found in Cheerios and Quaker Oats, according to a researcher. Yeah. Thanks, Grammy, for the blog post. Uh, if you or your children are eating Cheerios right now, there's a good chance that they're accompanied by a potentially harmful weed killer called Roundup. The Environmental Working Group. So, soak that in. Soak that in. The Environmental Working Group, or the EWG, out of Washington, D.C., an advocacy group that assesses chemicals in consumer products, on Wednesday released the results of its test it conducted on a popular, on popular oat-based products like Cheerios, Lucky Charms, Kind Bars, whatever that is, Nature Valley Bars, and others, to determine whether they can turn any of the herbicide gly glyphosate, 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 I don't know. I always have a problem with that word. I used to always call it glyophosphate, but of course that's incorrect. <laughs> anyway, glyphosate is the active ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup weed killer, and at high levels has been linked to cancer. Unfortunately, some of the results were not what you might hope. In its testing, the EWG 
tested 45 samples of conventionally grown oats and 16 of organically grown oats. In 43 of the 45 conventional cases, it detected glyphosate. In 31 of those cases, glyphosate levels were above the organization's health benchmark of 160 parts per billion. So we'll let you have a little poison in your food, just not too much. <laughs> On the organic side, only five of the products were discovered to have had glyphosate, and none of them reached uh, the 160 parts per billion benchmark. The benchmark is designed to provide a framework for how much glyphosate humans can ingest daily without having potential negative health effects. The higher the level, the worse for your health. Uh, yeah, it's poison, so, right. And it, it also accumulates, so. Anyway, the most concerning findings that came with the Quaker, Quaker old-fashioned oats. Hey, I eat those! which had high levels, <laughs> which had levels higher than a thousand parts per billion. The Cheerio samples had levels ranging from 470 to 530 parts per billion. And remember, the, their, their benchmark is 160, so uh, these are like way, way above what their benchmark is. Lucky Charms were tested in two samples and found to have 400 parts per billion and 230 parts per billion, respectively. We proudly stand by the safety and quality of our, our Quaker products, the company replied. Duh, Quaker does, does not add glyphosate. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. We don't, we don't just pour the poison directly into the cereal. We just grow it with it on it. Uh, we don't add the glyphosate during any of the... Uh, part of the milling process, glyphosate is used by farmers across the industry who apply it pre-harvest. They added the, <laughs> we don't just pour it in, yeah, it added that report, reported levels of the chemical are significantly below any regulatory limits and compliance standards for human consumption. Uh, kind vanilla blueberry clusters with flax seeds Sounds very uh, healthy, right? Had levels of 50 parts per billion and 60 parts per billion in the testing, well below the 160 parts per billion benchmark. The company Kind Oats and Honey with toasted coconut bar reported no glyphosate in the first test, but was tested again and found 120 parts per billion. All right, all this being said, and, and, and understanding that this is coming from a group that is probably directly tied uh, to your government officials. I decided I don't I don't trust who these people are. This this um, working group. What would you call them again? Environmental working group. The EWG. I don't trust these people. They 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 they, they sound like liars to me. Even though they're telling you stuff like saying, hey, this stuff is bad, don't eat food that's got it in it. I just don't trust them. They're, 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 they're government goons. So I, I came across this other article about the same thing from a website called vitals.lifehacker.com. And on this site it says, no... Your, your cereal is not full of weed killer. Now, I read through this article by Beth Skorecki. Skorecki. And I don't trust her either. Because, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just let you decide as I give you a part of this here. The Environmental Working Group knows how to play the media like a goddamn piano. They take a category of healthy things we all use, sunscreen, makeup, vegetables, now cereal, and divide them into safe and toxic categories. You better know the difference, they imply. Most recently, they, had a, they looked for glyphosate in the common, the, the, a common weed killer used in farming and oat-based cereals. They found 
only the tiniest traces, well, well under anybody's safety benchmarks. So there's really no story here. But with the right spin, the report, which is at, at press release, not peer-reviewed science, made headlines. They tested it. It was not peer-reviewed science. What did the EWG do? The EWG had several oat products tested by an outside lab. To be clear, this is not a published, peer-reviewed uh, scientific study. The EWG is an activist group with an axe to grind. And they set the, the terms of the study commission, uh, that commissioned it and, set out and sent out the press releases to drum up coverage. The bottom line on the results, the numbers are well under government guidelines. <laughs> so relax. Okay, up until that point, I was okay with her. But she says, whatever the government guidelines are, are fine. So relax. Your cereal will not kill you. Well, actually, it probably will, whether it's from glyphosate or any other stuff they put in there. But uh, she says it won't kill you. But there is more to the story. And she goes on to talk about what glyphosate is. <laughs> and, 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 and she gets down to this one part in here, and it says, Does glyphosate, glyphosate cause cancer? Nobody knows. Actually, yes, we all know. <laughs> it does. <laughs> And it's a controversial question. Again, it's not a controversial question. It's a well-known fact. So I don't trust her either. I don't trust the EWG. I don't trust this woman. So what do you do? Who do you trust? I don't know. Basically, what it comes down to is if you're consuming products, something in there and in some of them are going to wind up killing you at some degree, at some speed, some level, something's going to kill you. And, and it, <laughs> you know, um, you, you, you see interviews from people that are like 112 years old, and they say, oh, yeah, they eat uh, everything that's supposed to be bad for you every day of the year and for all those, you know, 90, 100 years, and, and they're just fine. It's not a problem with them. They all think it's all great. And then you got other people that are, are health nuts, and they work out and and jog and do all that fun and wonderful stuff, eating bran and whatever they're, they're told is healthy, and, and they die at 60 or 50 or whatever. So what's going to kill you? I don't know. Um, of these two, of the EWG or this woman, which do I trust more? I'd, I'd say it's a toss-up, because neither one of them uh, seems to be really telling the truth or, or being honest about this. Uh, well, well, most of you all probably had cereal, ate, ate cereal throughout your entire childhood, uh, up, up until you're in many you're probably still eating cereal to this day. And depending on however old you are, you ain't dead yet. Um <laughs> Not that this stuff is doing you any good. Uh, of course, uh, whenever they start adding poisons and stuff into into your foodstuffs, into your water, which they do by the tons, they put all that fluoride and and uh, what, what do you call that other stuff? That chlorine. It's a, it's a new kind of chlorine stuff they put in there, and, and um, <laughs> just all kinds of bad things. And it doesn't matter. In the air, you got your chemtrails coming down on you. It also, of course, nobody believes in chemtrails. Well, not nobody. We believe in them. Well, I say we, as in me and other people that I know. <laughs> I'm not saying all of you listening believe in chemtrails. Although, you should, because the government's freely admits to making chemtrails and putting all the nasty chemicals in there and spraying them about. And they may talk about it as if it's for uh, environmental climate control or whatever, but it's definitely for more than that, other other nasty things that they do with those. But if you've been eating cereal your whole life and you like cereal and you're using cow's milk on your cereal, 
<laughs> which the cow's milk has plenty of nasty stuff in it, and maybe some of y'all dumping sugar on top of it over there, uh, unless you're buying the already pre-sugared crap. Um, you know, and oatmeal, okay, oatmeal's supposed to be healthy. It's supposed to be one of the healthiest things out there. And it tastes good. I like oatmeal. <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is that, that comes out that's supposed to be good and healthy for you, because somewhere down the line, you're going to find out that whatever they've been doing to it took any good health benefit away and put some nasty stuff in along with it. You got to live, you got to eat, you got to breathe, you got to drink water. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Grammy's triggered. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, you know, just, just do what you do in uh, whatever, I'd, I'd say in moderation, but do it however you like. I mean, if you, if you start feeling bad, if you've changed something, then maybe change whatever you changed uh, and, and do that a little differently. I don't know. I'm no freaking health expert. Um, but I, I do know. I, I try to eat decent foods. Um, not that I want to live forever. I just don't want to live badly until I die. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's that's the whole thing is I, I don't care when I drop, but don't, I don't want to feel lousy on my way there. Um, so which one of these people are you going to trust? This woman that posts this blog, Beth Swarecki, over here on lifehacker.com, or the EWG, which is sounds like a you know a lobbying group uh, against the glyphosate. Which good, I I don't I have I have no love for for that glyphosate crap. Uh, I, I, matter of fact, I hate it. I, I wish they would never use anything such, such as that. Look at that, I killed another duck. Anyway. <laughs> But it's out there, and you're um, eating it in something that you're eating, no doubt, uh, along with GMO products, which that's uh, a whole other story that I'm not going to get into uh, this fine evening, just because, well, I'm just not going to. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let's talk about something which comes from a place you wouldn't expect it to be possibly a good story, but possibly it is. And it's only possibly a good story because it was a terrible story for so long, for so many years, for no reason, uh, by the, the very same people that make it possibly a good story now. What? Yeah. <laughs> Congress can finally tell hemp from pot. Huh. Imagine that. After, what, 80 years or so? <laughs> it says 50 years here, but I think it's been longer than that. Anyway, this is posted on theatlantic.com. It says here, for, for almost 50 years, hemp has been jumped, or lumped, excuse me, together with heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. Hemp. Hemp has been lumped together with heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. Of course, ecstasy's not that old, but whatever. Anyway, but new legislation could soon make the crop legal, not deregulated, but legal, meaning taxable, for farmers still struggling from the loss of tobacco, which is another problem pushed upon them by the very same people that can finally tell the difference here, maybe, possibly, at some time in the future. Anyway, hemp is currently a Schedule One federally controlled substance, the same legal category as LSD, heroin, and ecstasy. Like all forms of cannabis, it was criminalized in 1970, partially because Congress was worried that law enforcement couldn't tell the difference between hemp and marijuana. Law enforcement can't tell the difference between a freaking tomato plant and marijuana. <laughs> no less between hemp and marijuana, which are in the same family. 
They can't tell if you're growing dandelions because they'll come and tase you. Oh, boy. Anyway, there was a tremendous biological understanding of the difference, but Congress was not making policy based on this. They were basing it on fear. That's right, said John Hudak, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institute and the author of Marijuana, A Short History. Now, four years after the universities and the state agricultural departments were allowed to begin growing limited quantities of hemp for research purposes, Congress is expected next month to make the crop legal for Americans to grow for the first time in nearly 50 years. Legalization as part of the 2018 Omnibus Farm Bill would be a major victory for American hemp producers who believe hemp cultivation could become a billion dollar plus industry, yes, a multi-billion dollar industry easily. Given hemp's growing use in pharmaceuticals, foods, textiles, I didn't even mention fuels here, but legalization is just the first step in cultivating the American hemp industry, with many challenges ahead for farmers to ensure the viability of what is essentially a brand new crop establishing a supply chain, creating technologies for large-scale cultivation, and building b markets at both at home and abroad. These are daunting tasks for a crop whose prospects have been ruined for half a century by its association with government. I, I, I mean, with marijuana. Yeah, or oregano in pot, or uh, pretty much anything. Cops can't even get their addresses right when they come and kick people's doors in. <laughs> Oh, God. Hemp and marijuana are both types of the cannabis sativa, but they're bred differently and have different biological attributes. Most importantly, hemp does not have any psychoactive properties because it has far lower levels, almost nil, of THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, than marijuana. The two plants look different, too. The hemp stalks are long, thin, and fibrous, while marijuana grows closer to the ground. Oh, you could grow some big old pot plants, let me tell you. <laughs> Take my word for it. You can grow some uh, big old pot plants. <laughs> anyway, still for the decades after hemp was criminalized, Congress wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Everybody said that'll never happen. Everybody thinks that it's pot, and nobody's going to support it, said Ron, Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon who started the legalization push back in 2012. It's taken him six years. Ah. Hemp's multitude of uses include food, lotion, and perhaps most profitably, a recently approved epilepsy drug called Epodelio-X, okay, made of uh, CBD, uh, cannabid 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 the cannabinoid, <laughs> cannabinoid <laughs> that can be extracted from cannabis in both marijuana and hemp forms. It's legal to sell products made from hemp in the U.S., but the market is currently filled almost entirely by imports from other countries. Yeah. Hemp and marijuana are both types... Well, I already read that part. Um, but a bit, a bit, a bit. Whatever. I'll let you read the rest of this. Uh, just bear in mind that maybe, possibly, something good going to come out of a Gooberment organization? Not Gooberzilla organization. No, no, a Gooberman. <laughs> oh, man. A amaranth? What's amaranth? I don't know what amaranth is. Anyway, just bear that in mind. That it's possible that something they've screwed up and how many people's lives have been screwed over uh, by by this whole marijuana war on war on drugs thing, for what reason? For no reason whatsoever. <sighs> terrible, terrible stuff. All right, let's go back to the tunages uh, here. Yeah. Tunages, tuna fishes. <laughs> All right, this first uh, track here. This is a request. By Mr. Pox. Pox a home, Poxified. Oh, yeah, that was some nice stuff there. That's a brand new one from Disturbed. Uh, 
And um, I tell you, man, they just keep on rocking, keep on rocking. Uh, that's off of their new album. It's called Evolution. <laughs> now, now the sidebar here on that. Um, I watched a movie called Evolution a couple nights ago. Um, from it's a movie from back in 2001, uh, starring David Duchovny and uh, Juliana Moore. <laughs> Which, if you've never seen Evolution, that particular movie, uh, I, I think it's worth your while. It's funny. Um, Sci-fi funny is what it is, and um, <laughs> anyway, I dug it. Anyway, but but that song is called uh, "Are You Ready" by Disturbed. Brand new one there for from them. Uh, before that, we had Gary Clark Jr. and "Don't Owe You a Sang," and we kicked it off there uh, a, a poxified request of a, a band called Pendulum with a song called Witchcraft. And I enjoyed it. Um, it was pretty good. I, I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with the band. Uh, but, uh, you know, what the heck. It was pretty good. I, I liked it. Um, so uh, that's my opinion. That's my view. <laughs> it's my take. Hansel has just arrived. Howdy, Hans. How the hell's it hanging? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I got a ton of a ton of moose girl requests here, but we got no moose girl, so uh, we'll 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 save we'll save the moose girl requests for when moose girl is here. But uh, yeah, she uh, she does tend to fill up the list from time to time. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot about this song. I'll put this in for the next one. Oh god, and it's stupid, but I'll I'll put it in there anyway. <laughs> Stop that. Stop that. Because Hansel really liked that song. I think Hansel get get a kick out of that tune. <laughs> One of your favorite bands. Okay, cool, man. Um, like I said, they're, they're pretty good. I, I enjoyed them. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with them. I don't, I don't know them, but uh, that's all right. They did, they did good. They do well. Might have to check out some more music by them. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see as time goes on. He bla Hey, quiet over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This thing does stuff to me sometimes. All right, what else do we want? What else? What? 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 What else do we want here? The radioactive altered DNA zone. Uh, terrific. That's how it goes. I'll save that one for her too. Yeah. Hey, I'll throw this one in there. I can do what I want. <laughs> it's my show. Ain't nobody telling me what I can and can't do. All right. Uh, but, but Spielberg was not lying. One time dinosaurs did rule the earth. The other request is a bit harder. Cool. Okay, well, I'll get to that, but not this next set. I'll get to it soon enough. Soon enough. Okay. I'm going to share a story with you. You probably all heard some stuff about. And um, I, I have to disagree. I have to disagree with them on most things. Just because there's no evidence. There's no proof. And yet they're saying that they have evidence and proof. But they don't. What they have is the word of a redneck sheriff. That's what they have. And on the word of that redneck sheriff, and coercion by your government, they're doing, they're, they're, they're making these people out to be the worst people in the world. And maybe they are. I don't know. There's no proof either way. But let me give you it to you. 
to you anyway from neonnetal.com. Judge, jihadis training for school shootings were unfairly discriminated against. Of course, that's not what she said. <laughs> But that's the headline. That's that's the tag. Anyway, claims New Mexico authorities infringed on suspects' human rights by accusing them, which they may well have. Anyway, according to the article here, following the bombshell news that a gang of jihadis, which there's no proof they're jihadis, no proof whatsoever that they're jihadis, were arrested after the New Mexico training camp, which was, was not a training camp. It was a place where they lived. It was their home. But they're calling it a training camp. Was discovered. The reason the judge let the suspects go free has now been revealed. Judge Sarah Backus ruled that the suspects who were arrested for allegedly for training children to carry out school shootings in the U.S. Again, zero evidence that these kids were being trained to carry out school shootings. Zero evidence. <laughs> were unfairly discriminated against by New Mexico authorities because they were Muslim, which is a highly likely possibility. A report by CNN trusted news source for y'all, uncovered some of the horrors <laughs> that allegedly, there we finally getting allegedly in there, occurred at the compound involving children, along with a long list of disturbing allegations, no evidence, allegations, by a redneck sheriff, was that the father killed his own child during a religious ritual. Again, no evidence that he killed the child. They have found the body of a child there, but the child could have died from anything. There has been no, no autopsy done, no proof of anything done to this child that we can point to. It could be he killed it during... Who knows what? Anything could have happened, but we don't know. All we know is what that, that it's, it's being stated in this manner to inflame the public. Conservative Tribune reports 11 other children who were found on the cam compound are all severely malnourished, according to authorities. Now, I, I take that to mean they were thin and fit, rather than the fat white kids or fat Mexican kids that you get in the in the public schools because they weren't publicly schooled. They were schooled there at home. They were living off the grid. They were of Middle Eastern descent. So therefore, obviously, they're evil terrorists training kids to shoot up schools and jihadists. No evidence for any of that. The Daily Caller reported that the children who were living in filthy conditions, well, it's basically a big dirt area. Um, and there's not like lawns and shit like that out there where they are. Again, off the grid. <laughs> we're also being trained to conduct school shootings. Zero evidence, zero evidence, zero evidence of any training to conduct school shootings. A cache of weapons was found on the property. All perfectly legal. All the weapons they found were absolutely legal for them to own and have there at their their residence. New Mexico authorities charged five alleged Muslim extremists, alleged, with 11 counts of child abuse. But Siraj Wahaj, <laughs> what a name, the father of the murdered, it says here, We'll just say dead. A four-year-old boy, Abdullah, whatever, was not charged in his son's slaying. Huh. Before that, they said the father had killed him during a religious episode. Huh. Anyway, Siraj Wahaji, father, who bears the same name as an unindicted co-conspirator in the 1993 World Trading Center bombing case. 
oh, he's got the same name as this other guy from the 93 World Trade Center bombing, which was obviously an FBI setup. Um, but, but no, he has the same name. Why are you even mentioning that? He's not related to that guy. <laughs> he is also currently an imam living in Brooklyn, New York. Despite the evidence presented in, in uh, not, not the, not the father, the other guy. <laughs> we don't know that they were malnourished or filthy. <laughs> We just know that that's what they're, the way they're trying to report it to inflame the public. Which is working, by the way. Oh, it's tremendously working. <laughs> the people around New Mexico are all up in arms over this deal. They are, they are having none of it. It says, despite the evidence presented in court, zero evidence. There was no evidence. There was only, like I said, a redneck sheriff word on what happened and some coerced statements from the children. Coerced. Judge Sarah Backus sided with the defense. She particularly took issue with the faith of defendants being used as a reason to view them as a threat. They used the faith. Because they were Muslim, they are terrorists, is what the government or the redneck sheriff wants you to believe. Uh, Bacchus explained in her ruling, the defendants are apparently of the Muslim faith. The court was asked by the state to make a finding of dangerousness, dangerousness, and a finding of no conditions of release could ensure the safety of the community. The state apparently expected the court to take the individual's faith into account in making such a determination. The court has never been asked to take any other person's faith into account in making a ter determination of dangerousness. Uh, Bacchus gave further uh, her justification for the shocking decision. The court is not aware of any law that allows court to take a person's faith into consideration for making a dangerous determination. Dangerousness. Is that even a word? Dangerousness? <laughs> The state alleges that there was a big plan afoot, but the state has not shown, to my satisfaction, by clear and convincing evidence, what, in fact, that plan was, if there even was a plan. Okay, thank you there, Pox. The quality of not being safe. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Backus then released all five defendants on a $20,000 signature bond. The decision enabled the man to avoid paying any money unless they violate the release terms, which, by the way, they're all wearing ankle monitors. The murdered, murdered, no, not murdered, the, the dead child was found on the property. A cache of weapons, again, all perfectly legal for them and for them to own, and 11 emaciated, again, not emaciated, sin children, living in filth, not in filth, but in an area that has dirt rather than grass growing in a yard, was not enough for Bacchus to believe the men were a threat or should be held until trial. What does this judge need <laughs> to see for her to understand the problem of these defendants roaming free? <laughs> what the hell are they they're making them sound like they're gorillas or something? How did she think it was a good idea, idea not to invoke a financial risk to help them prevent them, them from just disappearing and to avoid prosecution? Well, you got their kids. <laughs> you have their kids. Where, where, where do you think they're just going to run off on all the kids? Anyway, for all the... What the hell happened there? This page jumped on me. I don't know why I did that. Oh, I lost my spot because the page jumped on me. Oh. I'm not bending the facts. I'm I'm straightening the facts out that they have no evidence of any kind. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, <laughs> I, I I just find it just 
if you think this is fine and this is okay, that they can just go ahead and arrest people and, and, and lock them up and call them jihadists with no evidence and say that they were training kids to shoot up schools without any evidence, and the dead child, maybe they just, their child died and they buried it. What's wrong with that? It's their property. Well, actually, uh, there's a little problem there. It wasn't all their property. They bought a piece of property, but part part of the, the residence they built was not actually on their property. It was on the next guy's property. But but again, unless they had some kind of a survey or a GPS or whatever come out there and, and, and lay out exactly where their property lines were, it's, it's just open territory, open area. Um, anyway, uh, it, it, it's just a bunch of nonsense in order to get people fired up. Um, <laughs> Dead children and Muslims are normal in Mexico. I don't, I don't know how many Muslims are in New Mexico. I have no idea. Uh, they have a dead body. Yeah, they have a dead body, but they have not done any any kind of a, a autopsy as far as I know yet. There's been no evidence, no proof to show what happened to that kid. So, unsanitary conditions. What does that mean? Just because they, they, they live basically in, a, in a, what you might consider a, a, a campground, um, <laughs> that's a fine way for kids to grow up. A, a dead body is not evidence, not unless they can prove that that kid was killed and then was killed by one of those people. Then no, it's not evidence. Anyway, enough of that. I, I just, I, I, I've been reading this stuff and hearing about this stuff because uh, I live here, and, 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 and there's so much of this crap going on. No, they didn't find any training material. Uh, <laughs> I mean, certainly, I, I would imagine that the, the parents there were, were training the kids how to shoot. Because, well, it's good for you to know how to shoot, especially if you live around people where, where they have guns. Exactly, Pox. People, everyone has some end sanitary conditions somewhere. Not everyone, but most people do. Um, is it illegal to bury somebody when they die? I would certainly hope not. <laughs> why? Why? why what, are, what do the police have to do with anything? They, they got nothing to do with it. If, it's it's, it's none, none of their business if somebody dies. I mean, they may think it's their business. They want to make it their business, but it's not their business. Um <sighs> <laughs> anyway. Oh God! So anyway, there's a lot of alleged and assumptions and uh, various things like that. But there, but there is no there is no proof. There is no evidence. There is uh, there there is nothing. There is nothing. So the hell with that. But if you want to think like that, just go live on Facebook because they don't like guns either. <laughs> it's hard to tr absolutely hard to trust a government story, especially in some of the rural areas of New Mexico and I imagine most other states that have rural areas. You get some awful redneck sheriffs out there, and 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 they probably sit around listening to whatever clap outlet that they listen to, whether it's Fox or CNN or. Uh, any of those, NBC, ABC, CBS, and, and they all report on all the terrible uh, humans uh, that are these these dirty Muslims and the bad things they do. Unembalmed? Why would you embalm? I, I do not want to be embalmed. Actually, I want to be burned, but if, if I was to be buried, I would not want to be embalmed first. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, Facebook blocks sharing of 3D printed guns, uh, gun files on its platforms. Perfectly legal. D didn't the uh, didn't the Supreme Court prove th or say these were legal? Yep, they did. The move comes as the states sue the Trump administration to prevent the digital blueprints from being posted online. Uh, too bad, so sad. Way too late. Uh, when was this article posted here? Let me, let me, let me just find that here. August 9th, so just a little over a week ago. Anyway, Facebook is banning from its platform sites that host digital blueprints to make guns on 3D printers, BuzzFeed News has learned. 
The move comes amid a rush by states to block these instructions from being posted. They're everywhere. They're out there. You can't get rid of them. Too late. <laughs> and if you want to block those sites from being on Facebook, good. You'll just have less people on Facebook. And that's a bonus no matter how you look at it. A jury settlement between the State Department and Defense Distributed, an open source organization that created the first completely completely 3D printed gun. You know, I think I'll post all of the uh, instructions for how to print these guns over uh, on World Truth. Um, clearly the way for the group to publish gun code. However, that was stalled. Not, no, it really wasn't stalled, because they were already too late. When a federal judge on July 31st granted temporary nationwide injunction uh, that prevented Defense Distributed from uploading the guns. They were there. They, they'd been there for a long time. In the meantime, Facebook is taking its own stand, sharing instructions on how to print firearms using 3D printers is not allowed under our community standards. What? You can't put stuff, how to print stuff on, on Facebook? What if I want to print out a spatula? Is that all right? Anyway, Facebook in a state said in a statement, in line with our policies, we are removing this content from Facebook. Good for you. The injunction prevents defense distributed from publishing the plans, but the instructions are widely available online on sites such as codeisfreespeech.com, which I think I talked about last week, and I think I posted the links in the blog post last week to Code is Free Speech and all of the gun plans. There, if you have a 3D printer and you desire to print your own gun, you can do so. <laughs> Embalming helps disease pathogens from get bullshit. Bullshit. That's that may be a, uh, what they tell you, but that's a lie. Your blood doesn't have disease pathogens in it after you're dead. <laughs> Maybe it does. I don't know. I'm, I'm no blood expert. <laughs> but but I don't. I I try. I I choose to, to say screw that. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's hear some more music right here. Now this first song, I, I think Hansel, Hansel will really like this first song here. Even though, well, he probably would have liked the original too. But this is a parody song, this one here. And, um... <laughs> well, there's oh. gonna be a... Wrong, wrong, wrong button. Wrong, wrong camera. <laughs> All right, this is a parody of a, a song by Afro Man. Uh, the, 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 song, the original song was uh, Because I Got High. This one's called something different. Jack. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching. Click on the left to subscribe to Pause Play. Click on the right to watch more videos. Oh, yeah, can that boy kick out the jams or what? That's Philip Sace there with I'm Going Home. Very nice guitar playing, man. All right, before that, we had Eric Burden and the Animals doing Sky Pilot, a request by Mr. Hansel, a.k.a. J. Dredd. Uh, before that, uh, Greta Van Fleet, When the Curtain Falls, from uh, just a few days ago, a couple days ago, that video came out there, official video. And uh, you can go there and look them up, and, and you can uh, download that song. Uh, it's pretty good stuff there if you like that style of music, rock and roll. And we kicked it off there with something called uh, uh, Because I'm White, an Afro Man parody by Rucka Rucka Ali. <laughs> oh, man, that's some funny stuff. <laughs> I tried not to laugh during that song, but then again, I can't really help it. It just kind of happens. <laughs> Funny guys, whoever they are. Um, anyway. God. Humanoids. <laughs> Oh, it's a short one. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, we'll put this one in there, too. Right. 
because it's new and new and we like new. I try I try to play a, a good bit of new music stuff here, stuff that I, I'm not really that familiar with, and you probably all have never heard. Um, why is that in there twice? I don't know, but it is. All right, I I I, I don't get it. I don't get it. See, we got the same timestamp on it. What'd you do, barman? All right. Whatever, 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 whatever. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Which way should we go now? Let's talk about Google for a moment. Google. The evil Google. And this from the evil AP. AP exclusive. Google tracks your movements like it or not yeah you heard me right Google wants to know where you go so badly that it records your movements even when you explicitly tell them not to an Associated Press investigation found that many Google services on Android devices and iPhones store your location data even if you used privacy setting that says it will prevent Google from doing so. Now, uh, you should be able to turn your GPS off. You should be able to. I, I don't know. Uh, computer science researchers at Princeton confirmed these findings at the AP's request. For the most part, Google is upfront about asking permission to use your location information. An app like Google Maps will remind us uh, or remind you to allow access to the location if you use it for navigating. If you agree to let it record your location over time, Google Maps will display that history for you in a timeline that maps out your daily movements. <laughs> Does that mean every time you go and take a shit? <laughs> Your daily movements? Anyway, storing your minute-by-minute -minute travels carries privacy risks and has been used by police to determine the location of suspects, such as a warrant that police in Raleigh, North Carolina, served on Google last year to find uh, devices near a murder scene. So the company lets you pause a setting called location history? Google says that will prevent the company from remembering where you've been. Google's support page on the subject states, you can turn off the location history at any time. With location history off, uh, the, the places you go are no longer stored. That's a lie. Even with location history paused, some Google apps automatically store time-stamped location data without asking. It is possible, although laborious, to delete it. And they have a link here on where you can go to delete that stuff. For example, Google stores a snapshot of where you've been uh, when you merely open its Maps app. Automatically, daily weather updates on Android phones pinpoint uh, roughly where you are. And some searches that have nothing to do with location, like chocolate, chocolate chip cookies or kids science kits, pinpoint your precise, precise latitude and longitude, accurate to the square foot and save it to your Google account. The privacy issue affects some 2 billion users of the devices that run on Google's Android operating software and hundreds of millions of worldwide iPhone users who rely on Google Maps or Search. Storing location data in violation of a user's preferences is wrong said Jonathan Mayer, a Princeton computer scientist and former chief technologist for the FCC uh, Enforcement Bureau. A researcher at Myers Lab confirmed that the AP's finding on, the, on multiple Android devices, the AP conducted its own test on several iPhones and phones and found the same behavior. If you're going to allow users to turn off something called location history, then all the places where you maintain location history should be turned off, Meyer said. That seems like a pretty straightforward position to me. Now, I'll just say this. I have a tablet, but I don't take it anywhere. I don't go anywhere with it. 
stays here in the house. I don't take it with me. And I do have a cell phone, but it's not a smartphone, and it does not have a GPS built into it. And the only way they, I guess they could do it by pinging towers or whatever uh, to find out where I am if I have it with me and turned on. But usually when I leave the house, I leave the cell phone here. I don't have really a need for any portable devices, electronic leashes, whatever you might want to call them. But uh, if your device has a, a GPS in, built into it and you can shut that GPS off, some give you the function, I think or probably most of them give you that function, um, you might consider turning that off. Uh, of course, on, on an Android device, you can't really get rid of Google because Android is Google. <laughs> uh, so just bear that in mind there. Um, Google don't give a crap about you. <laughs> They want your information. You are the product. You think you're getting all that stuff for free. You're not getting it for free. Well, there was a pre-Android, pre-Google Android, uh, but uh, that's, you know, if you have one of those, you have an ancient device. Um, so, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Okay, uh, I found this uh, this story particularly amusing <laughs> for no reason other than, well, I liked it. Anyway, from Gizmodo.com. Uh, I use Chromium on the uh, on my on my uh, Linux laptop. Anyway, sunken warship said to have billions in gold. Looks like it was a cryptocurrency scam. <laughs> Last month, a sunken Russian warship believed to have been carrying billions of dollars worth of gold was, quote, discovered by a South Korean company that immediately started making claims of how it was going to distribute its found treasure. Now police are investigating leaders of the company and have reason to believe it was all a cockamamie scheme to boost a new cryptocurrency company. <laughs> the Dmitry Donskoy, it was a Russian cruiser that was deliberately scuttled uh, by its captain after taking heavy damage uh, in the Battle of Shumima to in 1905. Over the years, rumors spread that the ship was carrying 200 tons of gold. That amount, uh, that's estimated to be worth $133 billion today. In July, a South Korean salvage team, working for a company called the Shinil Group, uh, claimed to have discovered the ship's wreckage and showed off video footage taken by robotic submarines. The team said it did not bring back the gold, but said that they had seen a treasure box on the ship, That uh, then everything about the story started to fall apart. Before the Shinho Group even applied for salvage rights uh, uh, with South Korea's Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Fisheries, it started promoting how it would divvy up the treasure. The Russian government would get half, 10% would go to Korean infrastructure projects, 10% would go to shareholders of the company. This caused a bit of chaos in Korean markets because according to Korean Herald, the Shinil Group was founded on July 1st. It has the same name as a different company in Singapore, and there's some confusion that it was related to a local company, Geel Steel. The steel company's stock exploded and then quickly sank when it issued a statement saying it has no involvement with the Shinil Group. All, all of this was, uh, was going on, as all of this was going on, uh, government-run Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology was telling reporters that it had recently discovered the ship's wreckage in 2003. According to Reuters, a spokesman for the Chanel Group said Kiosk's claims have found the, the wreck was fraudulent and that the existence of the gold backed up by historical records is backed up by historical records. Most bizarre twists of the outra and outrageous claims kept coming, culminating in a July 26 press conference in which the president, uh, company president Choi Ying Suk, told reporters 
there's no way for us to figure out whether there would be gold coins or bars on the Donoiskoy. Uh, the company's previous claims were based on speculation and media reports. He'd also said only he'd only become president a few hours before the conference, and other members of the leadership have resigned. <laughs> what? <laughs> What most Western reporters missed is that the shareholders, the Chanel Group, was saying would receive the dividends from, from the Treasury were actually people that were buying into its cryptocurrency. On Thursday, Yonhap news agents reported that police have interviewed Choi ying Suk and his predecessor, Rang Ru Sang Mi. <laughs> Po Police believe Choi had played a key role in the company business as a partner partner of the Ru siblings, uh, Ru Sang Mi and Ru Sang Jin, uh, who headed the, the firm Singapore unit. Its Singapore based affiliates at the time allegedly tried to sell investor, investors cryptocurrencies issued based upon the potential value of the shipwreck. The firm attracted investors by saying the cryptocurrency's value would be jacked up by 10,000 uh, by the 10,000 won by the end of September uh, from the, its current 2,200 won, so 50 times. <laughs> it's still totally unclear how this scam was supposed to be able to work, aside from get, just getting some quick money from suckers and taking off. The Chanel Group's website is down, and the initial YouTube video of the shipwreck has been deleted. <laughs> it's good money if you can make it. <laughs> I'm, telling, I'm telling you. Oh, that's a sweet deal right there. <laughs> You, if you can get, you can get a, make a few million dollars just scamming people on something that doesn't actually exist. You, you're doing all right. You, you're doing, you're doing quite, quite the little job. <laughs> oh, Goober, you tuned in. This one's for you. From blacklistednews.com uh, via Daily Mail. Uh, DailyMail.co.uk and Cryptogon. British UFO researcher who died after vomiting black liquid had his laptop wiped by authorities. So if you find any UFO stuff, well, be careful of, of the, the black liquid, the, the liquid, uh, the black oil. It'll get you. Anyway, a conspiracy theorist's laptop and mobile will be, anal or will be analyzed at an inquest into his death after the UFO expert vomited two liters of black liquid and died at age 39. Max Spears' laptop was wiped when authorities returned it after his death more than two years ago uh, during a trip to Poland to attend a conference. The pre-inquest review at Guild Hall in Sandwich, Kent, heard how the contents of his SIM card were also of particular interest. Before, before he died, uh, Mr. Spears messaged his mother, Vanessa Bates, saying, Your boy's in trouble. If anything happens to me, investigate. An initial inquest opened on December 2016, when the court heard he had vomited two liters of black blood, but the inquest was adjourned last year. The father of two of two allegedly made enemies during his investigation. His inquest will now be held over four days from uh, January 7, 2019. Authorities in Poland, where Mr. Spears was attending the conference, initially conducted uh, concluded the sudden death was due to natural causes, because people just naturally vomit up two liquids or, or two. Uh, liters of black liquid happens all the time when you're infested with an alien virus <laughs> oh man <laughs> 50 cents for visiting Arby's what, what are you talking about over here 
Um, <laughs> when I fill out my form to get free software, I usually tell them I'm a gynecologist named Dr. Seymour Kuntz. Then I get my free software. But I don't bump. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. All right. Okay. What do we, what do we got here? Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll be calling it awful close. I think I think we'll be calling an awful close. I, I I don't know how far we'll get into this uh, this next this next set because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna time it out. But uh, that that's all right. <laughs> we'll get close as we get. Whoa! Check that shit out. Okay. All right. Anyway, here's some music for you. I got music for you. That's what I do here on Balls to the Wall. Is I do music for you. <laughs> this is a young man by the name of Papa Chubby. <laughs> Black Betty, indeed. Spider bait there. Uh, before that was Warbringer, a band you probably never heard of before, uh, with an, a song called Power Unsurpassed. That was uh, just just put out, that video was just put out today. Uh, interesting stuff. Uh, good anti-war war video. And uh, before that, for Mr. Poxified, Rave the Requeem with Aeon. Eon, Aeon. Um, good, good stuff there as well. And kicking it off with Papa Chubby doing Grown Man Blues uh, back in May of this year at some place called Callahan's. Uh, I've been to places called Callahan's, but I don't know which Callahan's he was at. Uh, anyway, I couldn't have timed that out much better. Uh, tomorrow you got the dark table with Flash and Vin E. Vin E says anyway, he'll be there. I'll be back uh, on Sunday morning with the blues there at noon Eastern. Uh, of course, right here on RLM Radio, and we'll be playing some trivia in the chat. Then you're going to have Hal Ansley behind the woodshed opening up the big old can o whoop ass It's possible on Tuesday we'll get another dark table out of Flash. Who knows? It's happened in a couple, for a couple of weeks now, so we'll see. We'll see. But uh, Grammy will be back at her normal time on Wednesday evening uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern with Grammy's Rocket Chair. I'll be back again next Friday night, of course, with either Balls to the Wall or <laughs> Freaker's Ball. We'll find out as as time goes by. Uh, I, that's all, folks. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you requesting and chatting and just goofing along with me. Talk to you all later. Have a good weekend. Peace. <laughs>